Hi everybody, it's me Vic. Today I'm going to talk about Wavelink 2.0 Beta. I know I've used it for a while now and while it has its moments of intermittent crashing, it's a little bit more stable um, now, but from time to time it does crash. Now I know you see like a little slider moving under system, but I'm going to get into that in just a minute. What you're noticing, right, is that there is little colorful icons here under input, just like you do in the original Wavelink, except it doesn't, it doesn't have, um, in the original 1.0, this stuff right here, right? Well, the beautiful thing about that is you don't have to actually open up a volume mixer anymore. So if you notice, the little hamburger icon menu right here to get to volume mixer is no longer there. Now you could go and right click on it under your sound icon to get to volume mixer from your Windows 11 if you are a Windows 11 user. And you'll be able to see that everything that you have primarily routed once you update is going to be the same. Um, if you notice, this is going to default, right? Because I haven't routed it anywhere. But I do have a game running in the background and we're going to talk about that in a minute. But I do have Discord routed. So if I didn't have Discord routed, it would say default. Everything would say default. My default I prefer is system. So this is the only time I've came into the volume mixer was to make sure that my input device was my microphone effects and that my output device is system. Mainly because I wanna hear all system sounds coming through my system channel here in Wavelink. But what I see here is I have a game, right? And it's running and I don't want it running to my system. I want it running to my game channel. Now it may or may not crash, we're gonna see, because every time I click on the game channel, it may crash. I have a lot of games that are PC games, so we're gonna route this PC game here as well. And if you see, I have to scroll all the way to the bottom to do so. I have these apps here that have not been routed, which I'm gonna take care of as well. So right now I'm routing the game to the game menu, and look at that. Now if I go back to my volume mixer, right, I don't have to configure anything here, but look, it already did it for me automatically. The beautiful thing about that is, is if I were to do a Windows system update again, like a major update, you know how you have to go to volume mixer under 1.0 for Wavelink and you have to reconfigure it every time? This eliminates that. I absolutely love this. So for all my other stuff that I have here, like the Camera Hub, OBS Studio, the Razer, Chroma. I want all of that to go to my system, right? Like these are all system stuff. But if you look right here, this tells you Discord is routed to voice chat. It tells you my Google Chrome is routed to browser. It tells you my game is routed to the game and voice mod is routed to SFX. So it routes it the way that I want it and I just set it and forget it. I don't ever have to come here and reroute anything again, which is a very beautiful thing. Now for those who are VST users, the reason why, let me pull up volume mixer again. The reason why I have my input device as Wavelink microphone effects is because of this right here. I like using my VSTs. I am trying something new out and I'm liking the what I've done. But here, if, if you've noticed under VSTs, before you go live or before you do anything, you can test out your VST chain right here um, and you can hit record and it's gonna record your voice, and it's going to, once it's done recording, allow you to replay. So if you look, and you can hit record, and it's gonna record your voice, and it's going to, once it's done recording, allow you to replay. And you can hit record, and it's gonna record your voice, and it's going to, once it's done recording, allow you to replay. And you can hit record, which I think is a very handy tool. And one, it eliminates having to use another audio software to relay that back to you. For example, Audacity was one that I used to have on my computer. Once Wavelink 2.0 Beta had this feature, bye bye Audacity. <laughs> I love that. I love that I can hear what my VST sound like prior to me actually doing a recording. So um, that's a beautiful thing. Now, the other thing I wanna touch base on is the browsers, right? So in order for me to add these browsers, like if I were to remove one right now and add it back, I would need to make sure that a video is playing in my browser source for me to actually add it to the browser channel. So just keep that in mind. Same thing with music, you want to make sure the app is open because if it's not open, it's going to be inactive. 
If you've already routed everything in Wavelink 1.0, majority of it is gonna carry over unless there's something new you're adding. Um, if you do have to configure it, honestly, again, it's literally a click of a button and you scroll. The reason why my game channel takes a little bit of time is look at that. I have 162 other apps available somewhere on my PC that can run through this channel. Yes, I route my games to game. And the reason why I do that is because of the low latency. Uh, hopefully it doesn't crash. Every now and then Wavelink 2.0 does crash for me, but it's not horrible. <laughs> but uh, some people don't even have access to use the game channel right now using the beta. So install at your own risk. Um, if you do happen to get that the game channel is not working, um, you can roll back to 1.0, but keep in mind that you're still gonna have to route it to another channel until the update fixes that bug. But yes, low latency mode is very important if you are listening in the back of your microphone, in the back of the XLR dock, in the back of your XLR, in the back of your Wave 3 or Wave 1. Um, this is going to be a very wonderful thing. Um, and, and that's just for people who are used to playing like FPS games. I don't play FPS games, so it's not really too much of an issue for me. But um, I hope this helps those who are struggling with Wavelink 2.0 or curious about Wavelink 2.0. It's a very easy thing to set up. Now there is one thing I do want to mention. If you're a Stream Deck Plus user and you're using the Elgato XLR dock, do not remove your input. If you do, you have to go back and reconfigure your VSTs. I made this mistake and I had to actually ask, what order does what go in again? Because when I saved it, it was prior to me having things configured the way that I wanted and I forgot to back it up. So to discuss backing up, right? You would just go to add an effect, export effect chain, and you could la label it whatever you want. But in this case, it says Elgato XLR dock and you just save it and it backs everything up the way that you want it. So just keep that in mind. Anyways, thank you for watching. Oh, one, one more thing, you know what? There is one more thing I wanted to mention. When you do a Windows update, whether it's on Windows 10 or Windows 11, this is outside of Wavelink, okay? Wavelink is already gonna store everything here. You don't have to reconfigure anything here. You don't need to go into Volume Mixer and configure anything there. But on your broadcasting software, such as OBS, Meld, Streamlabs, um, I don't know of the other ones that are out there. I think those are the only ones that I'm currently running things through, testing different things out. I would say make sure that you go in there and make sure that your audio inputs and outputs are configured correctly with any of your wave channels. That is the only thing that I want to mention because with every Windows update, software minus Wavelink 2.0 um, may need you to reconfigure or um, set that back up. Thank you for watching, everybody.